Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Cornelius presents Building Faith in God's Love, filmed on the 18th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Welcome back, guys. Everybody's pretty much back. Uh, today I'm going to show you what are we doing today. Uh, building faith in God's love. We're we covering today. I'll, intro, I'll just give you a little quick intro with a bit, little bit about my life in the first century in regards to this subject. So I'm not if you know a little bit about my life. So I'll just read it out as I've got it up here. Um, when I was first taken away from my home, I was taken to a place where there was suffered a lot of sexual violence, physical violence, and emotional violence. As an abuse all that time. Just put them all up if you like, Fred. Yeah, I was kept. I couldn't ever get away from that scene. I was always kept as a prison there. I couldn't get away at all. Even in death, I, could, I would have been a way to get away, but I couldn't. I was, had to suffer it every single day. There was nothing, no change in that. It just got worse. In that time, they're trying to emotionally desensitise us, so it got shut down completely from the person I was, and had no sense of who I was after a few years. Just become a killing machine, basically. I was trained to um, just like a mercenary for the um, Roman army, and just they be, they desensitised us so much so we wouldn't feel what we did. We just did what we had to do. That's what my life ended up turning like, and end up killing lots of people, murdering women and children, and raping women and children, and killing lots of men, and had no remorse for any of that. So it up, didn't end up being a very nice person. And I'm glad I'm not like that today. <laughs> Next, we go five two. So the question was, and I asked myself this time when I've come back, given that I haven't led a life like that, which I'm glad of, like how did I find so, like faith in the end? How did I find some faith inside myself to want to change? I started to slowly feel about that. You can put them all up, thanks. Yeah, I started feeling about that more recently. That um, back then. Something had to change for me. I started to become tired and exhausted with my life. I just could not, I was just getting sick of doing the things I was doing all the time. And I wondered how that um, in those times that I found so much will to change or something, something drove me to change. There was a feeling of when I first met um, Jesus in those times. I saw him and saw the amount of love he had inside of him. There's the only person I've ever seen in that whole in the whole, my whole life that actually had love in front of everybody else that didn't want to have it. And he was willing to stand up and tell everybody about it and actually live it. And that was something something I needed, something the sort of change I wanted inside myself. I knew there's something more in life. And I had this feeling when he started speaking about love that that was the thing I wanted. I'd always wanted something different rather than the violence and hatred and all the things I'd done to other people, the things that were done to me, I was just sick of it all. When I saw him, it really hit my heart, and it, it, it drove me to want to change. It drove me to want to use my will in a different direction, the anger and violence and revenge that I'd just been doing for years and hoping it would bring me some sort of peace or some sort of restitude to all my hurt, but it never did. So in the end, I just wanted something better. That's one thing that helped me change the most. I just wanted something better inside my soul. So we need examples of faith. And the impact for me was coming across Jesus as a person who displayed so much amount of love and seeing him love others in a very, very degraded world is nearly bankrupt of love. It was an absolutely remarkable example for me to see and had such an impact on me. It actually gave me feel that love was possible. It just felt like a false. I heard some people talk about it very rarely, but it just wasn't even a considered thing almost back then. It was something that I wanted to find out about. So back then there was no Jesus. Like there's no story before when I come along. There was no like you've all heard. Most people um, these days associate Jesus with love. It's in, doesn't really work with the way the church is the, is the example, but there's no myth, there was no misinformation, there's no precedence like there is today, no belief, 
no talk about becoming perfected in love. Or back then, sorry as well, there's nothing of that at all around. So there's nothing actually. Here was the only example I had. There was nothing else for me to have. It's a little bit hard talking about. Um, and it's still like that today with many people. There's still there's, there's a lot of talk about it these days. Though, but then there was no talk about it. But so many people are in talking about it and doing all things, thinking it's love, but it still isn't love. It's still this world is still not much different than it was back then in regards to love. So what creates a lack of faith in God's love? The hurt self does not believe in God's love. The hurt self believes its fears and its pains. In other words, the hurt self believes it, it, is, it is bad, it is wrong, it is damaged. It believes all those things are its reality. It believes that's who it is. The hurt self doesn't believe in God's love because the hurt self cannot feel God's truth. Because it has so much error about itself, God's truth cannot enter it. God's truth cannot enter in a place where error already exists. The error needs to leave first. So this ends up creating a lack of faith in God's love. Also, the facade wants love from everybody other than God trying to get love from, which there's no love coming in our world. Is this the same one? I don't remember what I've got to, sorry. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the facade wants love from everybody else other than God. It starts learning that it can get love from other sources. It starts realising that it can just mimic what the world does with love. It starts looking for getting rid of its pain by trying to shut itself down or numb itself out, or look for other sources of um, good feelings that it can get. It feels like that's the way to get love. You can get it from other places. And the facade creates addictions to meet its erroneous conceptions. In other words, all their all those good feelings it's trying to get are made from filling it up with addictions, just trying to get one good feeling after another good feeling after another good feeling because they always wear out those good feelings. They just die and dissipate. But it has faith in this. The hurt, the hurt, the hurt child of the facade, sorry, the facade feels this is the way to get its hurt, hurt covered, I suppose, or put underground. It tries to cover it up all the time. It has faith in this method, the method of addictions, yet it keeps continuing its pain that way. It's still, like, there's no lack in God's, faith, God's um, love in that way. It's completely devoid. It's like right off the radar, God's love. It doesn't go anywhere near it. So when did faith in God's love disappear? When the child become hurt, does anybody have an idea when that might have been? When did that hurt begin? Uh, Sheridan? Is it from conception? Yeah, exactly. Straight away, as soon as they're born, or not even born, when they started absorbing the parents' emotions and feelings and beliefs about all sorts of things. And it's just started degrading the the potential for the love to actually enter the child actually started going downhill straight away because of the condition of earth. The parents on earth and the beliefs on earth is a very degraded condition. So when the child and the adult accepted the world's belief about God or the facade, it went even further down. The facade's now saying, I don't want to even feel about your hurts. I just want to try and avoid them at all costs. So the child has no hope then at that stage Already the, the world that someone that's brought into the world has already degraded its condition of love and now the facade's just going, I just don't even know about it and just takes it further down. So faith in God's love really is just like at an all-time bottom low at that stage. So how do I build real faith? I need to confront and deconstruct the facade about God's love. So we've covered deconstruction of the facade self generally in the other talks that AJ's done. But now specifically about the subject of faith we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. So how do we const- deconstruct the facade with God? Anybody have an idea with that one? Bob and Vanessa?
Um, I hopefully I got it right from yesterday, what AJ told me um, about my question. Um, I need to allow the hurt child to know the truth and feel the truth about God. Um, so tell ourselves the truth? Yeah, so I have to educate my hurt child about the truth of God. But before that, I think I have to um, feel the hurt and the deceit about what I have been taught. You first have to become aware of what we even know yes. first, like how we feel about God. We've got to come to terms with that first. Yeah. Mm. And then get to those a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vanessa? Yeah, I reckon I just have to be honest um, and say I don't have any faith in God Yes. rather than um, <clears throat> having hanging on to this facade that God was in my life when he wasn't. So, yeah, I reckon I just have to be real honest about yeah, it. Yeah, rather than having a pseudo-relationship with God, pretending God's all good and sort of hate him, that sort yeah. of feeling, and just go with our true feelings about how it really feels for us. Yeah, feel. Our from our experiences. Except that I have anger towards him, even though it's not spiritual, you know? Mm. Yeah, so we need to become, like, we need to confront the truth inside of ourselves about how we really feel, to be honest with ourselves. So what emotions are related to the facade with God? Anybody? Matt? Probably like that God has never been there for us. Mm. I think that's, that's probably a big one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Uh, I feel if I tell myself, like, God's really loving, but I actually feel quite differently to that. Yeah, it's quite a facade, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Like, God's really punishing. That's how I actually feel. Mm. Yeah. And Glenn? Um, I feel punished by God. Yeah. Because just of my false belief. I know that's not true. Yeah, but not, but not says, in, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but not in here. But yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Yep. No. <laughs> so what emotions drive the addictions with God? What do we want from God? This is all stuff you've got pretty good at the other day too. So Paul? To make everything right and take our pain away. Yeah. Big time, eh? <laughs> Does it work? I'm afraid not. Bugger. <laughs> <laughs> We're always wanting God to try and like blame God basically for all the pains in our life, aren't we, in the facade and not wanting to take responsibilities. We don't want to even feel the hurt inside of ourselves. So it must be God's fault. So there's a lot of blame on God, a lot of responsibility on God for our pains in our lives. There we go. So we want to blame God for the problems in our life. A lot of times too, as we start to wanting to sort of begin the search for God perhaps and check out concepts maybe of God, we end up, because we still want to stay in our facade, we still want to stay in a cycle of addictions, we end up having addictions with spirits, and spirits who believe they're God and tell us they're God, and so we end up having those feelings. What are some of those feelings we'll get from a spirit that believes they're God? Deb Felix? And Matt? Uh, kind of like a pat on the back kind of and the support and... Um, uh, Kind of like a there, there, and uh, yeah, there, there, support, and um, felt like it was just a warmness. So a nurturing sort of yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel like yeah. someone's interested in you. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's not really, um, it's, it's, it feels a little bit like avoidance of my, what's, what's really going on in my life. Mm. Too. In, it's just, in the facade, we think it's pretty good, huh? Mm. Yeah. 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 Feel like we're having a real connection with God in that stage. Yeah. Mm. Matt, yeah. Uh, special, important, yeah. powerful, and like some, depending on what kind of spirit, sometimes it's like your God, we're all God, kind of weird yeah, feelings. It gets all, sort of, yeah. all hippy dippy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Pete, in the back there. Um, my experience was that um, I had the feeling that I no longer had any fear. That the spirit was mm. protecting me from yeah, a, I feel like yeah. I'm safety. You don't have, to have yeah. anything to worry about. I'm yeah. looking after you. Yeah. 
I used to say that too. It's like they'd yeah. ask you, what's, what's your experience? I'd say, well, now I no longer have fear. Yeah. And did you feel happy? I felt really good about it. Yeah. And didn't think I had any fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is your life changing? It changed lots of parts of my life, but yeah. <laughs> not life changing. Not permanently. No. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not real God, is it? Like if you have a relationship with God, it's going to change our, our whole life. Yeah, and for me personally, I actually felt felt it cheated by the experience. And now with a relationship with God, there's this whole trust thing that I've been cheated in a previous experience. So yeah, I need it's like to... someone told you you're eating chocolate, but it's just dirt, wasn't it? <laughs> God's like the real stuff. <laughs> it ripped off. Yeah, I've yeah. felt that. Yeah. yeah. We just want to feel good, basically. It's our addictions. Our facade wants to stay in addiction, so we just want to feel good. So we start, instead of wanting to challenge any of the things why we don't feel good, we start looking for other alternatives to feel good from sometimes it's not working with people. We're getting a bit jaded by that one now. So we start looking for God, but end up not wanting to change our addictions and not wanting to actually have a real connection with ourselves about why we're not feeling good, we end up having addictions with spirits. And spirits love that. They love trying to get a good feeling, like, like the Vata system of emotions. You feel good about me, I feel good about you sort of thing. And then you end up getting, like people saying, you end up getting just manipulated. And you, there's nev never any, any, never any growth. And just it reinforces the damage actually that happens from the childhood. It's been manipulated. And there's never real faith that grows in that either. Like you never learn, like, really what faith is about. In this cycle of facade, you can never learn about it. Oh, experiences of my life, again. <laughs> oh, what do we have in there for that one? Basically, when, like I was saying, I was getting sick and tired in my life of um, doing the same thing over and over again, one different experience, I had to do something different. I had to go and change. I had to actively go and do something in my life. I had to, had to take a different decision and different action. Different action. And so I, I ended up doing that. But the changes that happened for me were some things with... There's a feeling inside my heart that attracted things in my life. It attracted even an event to end up going to Jerusalem. It had, to had nothing to do with why Jesus was there. It was a political event. But I happened to be there because I, want, I was wanting change at that stage. I happened to attract a woman that actually touched me for the first time on my arm. She's healing a wound on my arm while I was sitting in a tavern. And she's the first woman that touched me that, that almost freaked me out because someone touched me with, with compassion and love. Someone didn't actually want to touch me and, and cause violence to my body. There's all these different experiences happening for me. My mother came and visited. It's like she found me because of an event that happened there. I hadn't seen her since I was a kid, and that was very emotional for me. There's lots of things going on. Because by your, your will to want to change, the will to not want to do the same things you've been doing before, that's going to make the changes in your life. Something has to change. Otherwise, you're never going to end up leading your way towards some loving, like having some faith in God. You need to make changes. You can't stay in the facade. God can't love the facade. The facade's something fake. God created everything. Everything God created, God can give love to. God didn't create the facade. You created the facade, so God cannot love that. God can love the hurt child because God created the child. God didn't create the hurt, though, on the child. That's what we're going to get to. Yes, Bob? Yeah, on that, I've been in a, a cycle for many years where um, I thought that I was wanting God to help me through my addictions and when God wasn't helping me or I wasn't feeling anything, I thought, well, then oh, I'm just not trying hard enough so I just have to try harder next time and maybe he'll help me next time. So now I'm realising that God can't help me while I'm in my facade and wanting him to help me anyway. Mm. Um, so it's not, it wasn't about trying harder. It was actually about doing it differently, <laughs> engaging God in a different way. Well, it's about engaging yourself in a different way. If you just want to stay in facade, you cannot be helped. Yeah. You need to engage yourself differently. God's always ready to engage you. It just has to be in the conditions that are suitable to yep. love being able to come into you and help mm. you. Mm. Yeah. Facade mm. ain't one of them. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we move on? 
So just like I say, we need to choose to have different experiences. It's going to challenge our current addictions, fears and beliefs about God. So how do I build real faith? I need to allow the hurt self to grieve the loss of faith in God's love. The hurt self has not had a real feeling, has never felt a real feeling of relationships, in loving relationships. It's never had a loving relationship even from ourselves. If, if we want to live in a facade, we've walked away from our little our hurt, and just left it over there. We're not interested in it, we try, and we've constructed a life to try and stay right away from it. So it hasn't even had a relationship with ourselves. The hurt self does not believe God is loving. The hurt self believes that God is like, just like our parents, the ones that created hurt inside of ourselves already. So it's very reluctant to want to have a relationship with that again. It's had so much hurt already, it just doesn't want any more. And the world's view of God is just like our parents, really. So it's not very enticing. So how does it build real faith? It's impossible from that angle, isn't it, really? We never nearly know what real love feels like. We've never had an experience of it. And faith needs to be built on real things. And real love, or God's love, is a real thing. But we've never had that, so how is it possible to build faith? We need to come to terms too with the grief inside of ourselves we're going to feel about this too. But if I don't have faith, you've got to come to this feeling, I don't have any faith in God. I don't have any faith in a system that's going to be able to help me. I don't have any faith in someone that can help me so much when I need help so much. I just don't have any faith in that. And it's going to feel so empty. You need to feel those feelings about that. It's the absence of it. If you had faith, you'd have, you had faith in God, you wouldn't have any worry in the world. You'd be free to do whatever you want to do. You'd have no fear. You'd just be passionate about thinking, knowing that God's law is looking after you. You just want to do whatever you wanted to do, and you'd be looked after because you know God's laws work. You'd have faith in them. You would have learned that, but no one's ever taught us that. We need to grieve that no one's ever taught us that. So we never know who God really is. We'll never know. More of my experiences. Oh, man. <laughs> I guess for me, when I first went to, oh, I didn't go to, it was not like a walk there. I was take, taken there out of my home by the Roman soldiers to the camp that we got taken to. There's other kids there too. When I was there, I could see other kids were just as frightened as me. There's a couple other young kids as well as kids of all different ages. We've been there for quite a while. And um, I remember we didn't talk to anybody. I was so scared. I used to see other kids' eyes, and I could see the love in some of the kids' eyes, the young kids. And they slowly saw them fade. I saw the love fade and the hope fade from their eyes, and I wondered if that was happening to mine as well. So I had hope. I, just still, I still had a hope inside of myself about the love from my parents, the love that they'd come and, they'd come and pick me up. I had hope and hope and hope. It was like it's like this rock inside of me that I just didn't want to let go of, and I held on strongly to it. But even the more and more punishment I got, I still held on to I knew they'd come and get me, even though I felt I must have been bad. I didn't know what I'd done and why I was there. And slowly after time, that rock started just getting ground down and ground down and ground down and ground down and ground down. At last, I was just standing with this little grain of sand, I was hanging on dearly for this little grain of sand just to hold me for hope that someone loved me. But in the end, I had to start realising the, the one thing I didn't want to actually realise, that they weren't coming. There was no love. I just had to let that little one little grain of sand crumble. And that was the end of me with my hope for any sort of love, including God's love at that stage. So you need to get to that point of grief about the hurt child, how hurt you felt, like the, the, the deep, deep loss inside your heart. The things that have happened to you are real. That's why you're here today, trying to fix them up, <laughs> trying to work out what's going on. So and how do I build real faith still? I would lovingly need to re-educate. This is a third step, really, that you need to do. First is removing the facade or realising you've got a facade and working through that. The next step we need to do is to let yourself, when you remove the facade, you'll see the hurt child or the hurt feeling inside yourself when you're young. It accesses them now. You were shutting them off before. When you start accessing those feelings, 
you, you, this is a time when you start acting the, feel, the hurt feeling inside yourself. This is the first time you're going to have a chance to have a relationship with God because you're being real. You're working with what's real inside you now. Now God can have a real relationship with you. He can have real love start to enter you and help you with those feelings. And so, so when we get to this stage too, we're going to be needing to re-educate the child though too. We need to give it some new information because it's had false beliefs all its life. So we have, need to lovingly re-educate the hurt self about God's real character. So the hurt self never experienced a loving parent. We are going to become its first loving parent inside ourselves. We are going to love ourselves. We are going to parent our little hurt self inside of ourselves. It's the first moment we're going to feel love in our life. The hurt self does not know what a loving parent feels like. So we're going to be, as we're learning to learn new things about ourselves, we're going, we're going to start being more gentle with ourselves. We're going to be more compassionate with ourselves. We're going to be more kind to ourselves and patient with our growth as well. We're going to be like a role model to this parent. The way we, the way we handle ourselves with our pain, like with all the things you've been doing here when you go home, you need to be patient and kind with yourself. You just start loving yourself and be gentle with yourself and compassionate with the feelings you've got inside yourself that are hurting. This is, what, how, this is how we teach our little child inside of ourselves. So it helps us open up to our pain. The hurt self never had a parent who taught it the truth. So we're going to need to teach our, our, ourselves, our hurt child, about the truth. We're going to need to teach ourselves that I'm not bad. I was not born bad. We're going to need to teach itself about like God's laws. God's been trying to have a relationship with me all my life. You're going to need to find out like, that God's been trying to teach me through all these laws and start understanding that these laws are good. They're for my benefit. And God's been wanting to have a relationship with, with me all this time. There's been so much things that have been putting me off that relationship, but God's been waiting, just waiting for the moment when we've come to God to want to, be, to, want to have that relationship. We're going to need to teach ourselves that and feel that in our hearts. You now need to re-educate your hurt self about how God really is, about learning about God's character and starting to learn not what the world's told you God was like. You need to re-educate yourself about how God really is by having some experiences with God, trying different, d different methods like trying desire. See what you, just instead of choosing going down a track of next decision to make or make out of fear, let's try desire and see what happens. Start using God's laws in your favour rather than trying to run away from them. And start looking around and start observing and when you're um, in your environment too, you can teach a little yourself about how God's character is, how loving God is. Like when you go and see a, an art gallery or something like that, you often look at a painting and you'll talk all about it, about the artist's feelings, about what he is, like his um, a little love, he puts this into it and that, and that God's like that too. God's created this whole world. And you can start learning about, a bit about God's character and um, personality through that. But even just to learn about God's character, he's made a whole lot of laws to help you get back to, out of your pain. There wasn't, you weren't just dumped here and left here. There was actually a method. Even when God knew that everybody would, well, it's a possibility that people would turn away from love, he even made a method to handle that. God's a smarty. He's a real thinker. Yeah. And someone that loves you so much knew that could possibly happen and help you out of that. So you've got to start feeling the love God has for you in that. And start re-educating your little child about this and your adult child as well, or adult self, or you. <laughs> it's all you. It's all the same person. So no one else has done this for us in our childhood. No one's had enough care for us to do this. No one's ever investigated enough to want to actually love us better. It's just been the same thing uh, generation after generation after generation. And it's about time we stop that and at least love ourselves. So like I say, you need to find out the qualities and personality and character of God. So how are we going to choose? It says choose to use our will in harmony with love. So what are we going to do now? How would we do that? If we want to re-educate the hurt self about God's real character, how would we start doing something, making a different choice in will with harmony of love? Anybody? Yeah, hands. <laughs> Paul? Um. 
um, start to spend time and develop our will to get to know God and mm. and get get to know God's qualities and personality and all that stuff. Yeah, so you look for, and you'll also investigate it too about God. God's anything that um, God has created will always grow. It'll always grow in love. So anything that's that's supposedly from God and does, that doesn't grow in love constantly, and may, and become a new, a better experience in love for you, then it can't be love. It can't be from God. So you need to be discerning as well about knowing a bit more about God. Life to investigate a lot about what God's like, what God's love does. As many things as addictions do, isn't there? Like you can stop doing those. Is you know, will in the right direction for a start? Yeah. Is it a bar? Um, I'm feeling that I need to um, to use my will in harmony with love. Is that? Maybe a good exercise would be to be patient with my hurt self and maybe take it on the journey of discovering God with me together, the journey together. I'm just wondering whether that's... This is where you want a relationship with God? You'll always be yes, together. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, invite my child, my, my hurt child with me on that journey um, to discover God and experiment together. Yeah, you're always you're always just one person. Yeah, I so, know, but right. I've yeah, I've always separated the two, and I'm just feeling that now that yeah that hurt. Yeah, it's like almost for me, it feels like um, I know there's a little person stuck in me, all different ages and all different events. I want to be the adult that loves every single one of those ages. I want to know about the hurt from every one of those ages. And I'd be able to like educate each child of different ages what was going on and why it happened, and what we can do about it in a loving yeah. way. Yeah. And how we can get God to help us through these things. We don't have to do it all by ourselves at this stage. Like we thought we did, but we don't. If we're willing to feel what really happened, God's going to help us with that. So things that were done to us a lot of the times, that's what created our hurt, and God can help us with those things. So, Courtney, for you in the first century, the pain must have got very, very great. Very intense, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then you saw some love in somebody else. Yeah. yeah. And obviously longed for that. Yeah, there must Jesus. have been there's some, I guess, in a way, the contrast between what was my life and being so far away from love and then seeing a massive example of someone that one that got in love. It's a pretty big contrast, isn't it? Mm. And it's something that actually I could see it, that I felt like it's something I like. Something was different from the world, something that was dope, because that wasn't me. All those things that were done to me, I was changed. It wasn't my real, the real me. I could somehow, I don't know how I even felt that little bit, but just, mm. I think it was just a little one's experience of having some love before I, that, all that stuff happened that I still held on to somewhere inside myself. And when I saw it again, I wanted, I wanted to know about it. I didn't stop. Mm. Yeah. Glenn? Mm. Right, thing. Oh. The most loving thing I can do, because I'm in complete denial about actually having God, so um, to know that it's me my self-reflection to know I'm rejecting God is the most loving thing I can see. And if I can look at that and understand that because I'm blocking, I'm not receiving anything from God, that um, take personal responsibility. It's the most loving thing I feel at where I'm at of what I can do. Totally. Yep. You need to find out what's blocking inside yourself from that, that relationship. Mm. I'll help you with all relationships it will. So the next part we need to do is start embracing emotional experiences with God by feeling God's emotions for you, feeling God's feelings that come to you. You will know how God feels about you at last. You'll actually feel the experience now of God's feelings towards you. So we've been down the stages, haven't we? We've been from the facade. We need to remove that, sort of work through that, remove that. So then we can actually now expose the feelings of the hurt child 
Because a hurt child is the part that's going to actually open us up to a relationship with God when we're willing to feel those feelings and, our, and start re-educating ourselves about God a little bit more so we can actually have trust and faith that we can actually go towards that relationship. As we start going towards that relationship and having more, more um, confidence that we can actually go through this, as we start going through this, actually God can start coming in and having experiences with us then. We're now open the door up to God. So we now start having emotional experiences with God. We need to have the emotional experiences to have faith. This is what creates it. It has to be an experience of a fact, something that really happened. And it's our experience, not someone else's. You will know and begin to trust in God's love again because you'll feel it. This is the relationship we have with God. It's a feeling relationship and it's our feeling. It's our experience. It becomes very real for us. And we know it's real because it changes us. It's God's love that changes us. And you won't miss it. As in, it won't be just something you'll notice next day you'll be after doing the same thing again. It'll completely change you. You'll feel like a different person because you will be a different person. You'll no longer have that heaviness of the hurt inside you about that issue. You will be a different person. It's like jumping up into a little part of the next sphere, or the same sphere, but it's another level of love. You've just increased your love in your soul. And God helped you with that. It's God's love that did that for you. And that's going to give you faith. If that doesn't give you faith, I don't know where you are. <laughs> you can't miss it. It will. When it's your experience, you'll look back at this and understand what I'm talking about. I look forward to that day for you guys. <laughs> so faith is a potential of the soul that must be developed. It's not always in there. It's something that to, has to be developed. It's not a given. It's not already there when you're born. Our real sense, our real self has the ability to now develop real faith in God. Let's go through these. God created our soul with the potential to have faith in God just a potential. We have to build it. Faith in God is not a normal state. It must be developed by us. This is because a relationship with God is a choice of our soul-based will. So it's going to need our will to make it happen. Faith is developed through having an emotional experience with God, not an intellectual experience, and an emotional experience with God, not with the Spirit, with God. Embrace these emotional experiences. Let them come. Let them happen. Be, let yourself be emotionally overwhelmed. Actually, you just, if you're going to have an experience with God, you will be emotionally overwhelmed. It's a given. When that much love comes to you, it hits you. So in conclusion, reversal of our lack of faith must proceed in the opposite order. It was created. The last thing that happened really in our lives is pretty much where we are right now, which is the adult facade. The adult facade placed a layer of resistance, layer of resistance to our childhood experiences. The adult facade must be experienced and deconstructed. Our lack of faith in love of the God variety and our diminished ability to trust in our ability to be able to cope with our negative emotional experiences has created a world based on faith in error and addictions, not truth or love. So next stage, potentially, the potential of faith in God was diminished because of our childhood experiences. Yeah. <laughs> the childhood hurt must be released before we can truly have faith. This makes our little hurt this a little hurt child inside of us even more sad as it seems destined to never be found again living a life like this, almost a hopeless physical feeling. As, as that child experiences that, faith is a potential of the soul that must be developed. It's not a given. And that was it. <laughs> Finished quite quickly. So... Does that sort of make some sense to you now, how faith gets developed? We need to have to work through our facade 
start to expose the hurt that's inside of us that we've been trying to run away from all our time and start working on the hurt, start allowing ourselves to feel the hurt. We need to start feeling. We've been avoiding that all our lives. As we start allowing ourselves to feel and start re-educating ourselves about um, the hurt that's inside of ourselves, about God as well, about how we're going to need help from God during this process, as we start learning about those things, we can actually start having trust. We will we'll have some trust to start off with. That it's okay to start experiencing these things. As we start to experience them emotionally, we're now opening the door to God's love to come in to be able to help us. We're using our will in that direction. As we start to have God's love help us and it starts to change us, we will know that the experience, will, like I said, you will not miss it. Once you've had that experience, and you see the change in yourself and the change in your life, the change in your feelings about yourself, you're changing your feelings about the world, your newfound confidence, all these other feelings you've been trying to get for years through addictions. When you found out this method works, you're going to have faith. And you're going to try it again because it worked. It was awesome. And you're going to try it again and again and again to start building faith. And that's how you build faith in God's love. So I hope you got that out of that talk. <laughs> yes. My experience of that is that when I had that interview with AJ, I had that experience of actually experiencing the possibility of what God is like, that kind of embracing, non-judging, just mm. so beautiful. It's, it's, it's life changing, you yeah. know, like sort of goes through yeah, like the realization. So, yes. Mm. Yeah. But now you've got to make it real. Be part of your experience more often. Yeah. 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 As you go through these steps. Cool. Is there anybody any other questions? Well, wow, you guys want to just rip through this day and so you can get on with the day. Awesome. All right. <laughs> So Mary's coming up next. She's going to talk to you about strengthening our will to receive God's love. All right, we've got one more question, Cecily. So, Corny, in the first century, um, your death, I believe, occurred pretty quickly after you seeing Jesus. Is that right? Uh, within about two weeks-ish. So would, that means that most of your work was done in the spirit world? And a lot, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, but the thing is, like we've been trying to explain to you a little bit here to, or all through, AJ's been explaining it for years, you're better off trying to do as much work now as you can because it's going to make it a lot easier when you get there. And that did for me. I'm mm -hmm. glad I just started when I was on earth and I made some pretty big changes just there and then. Yes, by giving up your life for truth. Like being willing to to die. I didn't give up my life. I felt like I just got my life back. Oh my yes. My life had been given up way back before. So what I mean was being willing to let people kill you by standing in truth. I didn't consider the implications. It's my heart needed to do something. I needed to do something different and something of love. So I've done something of the opposite all my life. And I, I didn't care what anybody thought. I didn't even care about the consequences at the time. I just needed to do what was loving. Mm. That's all. But that's the most important thing, though, too. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much for your participation, too.